everyone. My name is Dr. David Pugh. I am a staff scientist at the Cal Visualization Core Laboratory. This afternoon, I am going to show you how to uh, monitor your GPU and CPU resource utilization of your training jobs that you're prototyping using JupyterLab server. So this is a continuation of a series of videos that I've been making to help uh, primarily new users get started with PyTorch uh, deep learning training uh, on IBEX. And it picks up where the previous video, which was on how to launch training jobs on IBEX, left off. Cool. So let's get started. So I've already logged into IBEX, and, and I have already launched the JupyterLab server. So the, the JupyterLab server um, launching video was um, part of the uh, is a previous video that was part of this workshop uh, training series. So if you are uncertain how to do that, uh, please look at one of the previous videos on the Getting Started with PyTorch uh, playlist on our YouTube channel, and you should be able to um, walk through the steps of launching your JupyterLab your JupyterLab server. Okay. So before we can start talking about how to monitor GPU and CPU resource utilization, we need to actually launch our training script again so we can have a job to monitor. So if you look inside the source directory, there is our train.py script previously from our previous video. So we're going to use this script, um, possibly making only a couple of minor changes. In particular, for right now, let's just go ahead and reduce the number of training epochs to two. And because we're going to be launching initially this job interactively, then it's best to set the talk to disable variable to be false. So this will make sure that the progress bar is printed um, as expected. OK. <clears throat> so if we go back to our project root directory and then we visit our launcher, we can then launch a terminal. I'm just going to hide the, uh, the file browser for now. OK. So from within this terminal, we're going to launch our training job just interactively within the compute resources that we've allocated on the debug partition. So first, we can see that the base Conda environment is the active environment. So we need to first activate our Conda environment for our project. Now we can use Python to launch the training script, train.py. I'm just going to wait for this to get started. OK, there we go. All right. So now we're getting started with our initial training epoch. So now what I'm going to do is show you how to use a JupyterLab extension called JupyterLab NV Dashboard, which was um, created by the Rapids AI team at NVIDIA and open source uh, last year. So th this. Um, JupyterLab extension is going to provide you with access to these um, real-time dashboards uh, of the various metrics that will help you keep track of, of how much uh, GPU uh, compute and memory and CPU compute and memory and network bandwidth and PCI throughput and things like that um, are being used by your job. And this is fantastic when you're prototyping a job on the debug partition so that once you are uh, so that you can be confident that your job is actually using the GPUs that you've requested to the fullest extent possible before you try to scale up your job and ask for more resources for a longer period of time. Okay, so we're about 40% now through the first training epoch. So I wanna show you how to start these, uh, these monitoring servers. So over on the left-hand side of your uh, browser window, there is a column which has most of the JupyterLab extensions that are uh, installed and activated in this server. So if you click, there'll be one that'll say system dashboard. So if you click on that, then um, what you will get is a list of the GPU dashboards that are available. And for some reason, something seems to have gone haywire with my, uh, my progress bar over here, but that's okay. We can just ignore that. So there are a number of dashboards here. Um, and I'll let you explore these dashboards and, and see which ones that you like, but I'm going to point out just two that I'm particularly, um, uh, that I particularly like. The first is GPU resources. So this dashboard provides 
the, what I think are the four uh, key metrics for GPU utilization. In the top dashboard, you get the compute utilization, and you want that number to be high. The higher, the better. For longer periods of time, the better. So the fact that our GPU utilization is almost 100% all the time is fantastic. That's great. That's what you want to see. The second is memory utilization per device. And so this is how much of your GPU's memory are you utilizing? So again, typically the higher, the better. You want to um, minimize the amount of data that has to move from the CPU to the GPU by keeping as much data on the GPU and giving the GPU as much work to do as possible. So a good way to do that is to try to fill up the memory on the card. So our V100 GPUs have 32 gigs of memory, which is about twice the amount of memory of a typical V100 card that you would find in a public cloud. So it's important to um, really try to make use of that memory on these big cards. And so here you can see that we're nearly uh, 26, 27 gigs of, of memory out of the 32. So that's, that's pretty good. The third uh, dashboard shows the total compute and memory utilization as percentages. So nearly 100% uh, total GPU utilization and nearly uh, 80 85% of total memory utilization. Um, so with, um, with this tool, you can monitor multiple GPUs on the same node. So for example, we have some nodes that have eight GPUs uh, on our IBEX cluster. Those eight GPUs would show up as eight different lines in this first dashboard and the second dashboard. And then the aggregate percentages would be what would show up in this third dashboard. The final dashboard on GPU utilization is PCI throughput. And that's the amount of data that's flowing through the PCI Express to and from the GPU back to the other devices to which the PCI Express is connected to. So the RX is the data received to the GPU, and the TX is the data sent back from the GPU to, um, to other devices, such as the CPU. OK. So uh, the next dashboard I want to show you is the machine resources dashboard. And I'm going to make this a little bit easier to see both at the same time. So for the machine resources dashboard, you get a lot of the similar, inf similar information as you do with the GPU dashboard. So the first is going to be your CPU compute utilization. The second dashboard is your CPU memory utilization. Uh, the third is your disk I.O. bandwidth for read and write. And your fourth is the network I.O. bandwidth, so how much data is, is moving over the network. Um, so well, it looks like we might be coming to the end of our, of our training job here. So I will run this job again, <clears throat> and then uh, we can talk about these dashboards some more. Yeah, so I guess if we were to go over here and take a look, we would see, yeah, OK. So our job has, has finished. So let's run it again. So I'll just press the up key and get Python source trained up part. I hit enter. And then flip back to GPU resources. So as the job spins up, you should see some memory allocation and then some GPU uh, utilization start. So there's our initial bit of memory allocation. Eventually, we'll get a big chunk of memory allocated once we have allocated the uh, ResNet 50 model to the GPU and started moving training data across. Now, if you take a look over here at the CPU utilization, you'll see that the, the CPU utilization is, um, is uh, not uh, is not terribly terribly high. It's quite um, it's quite low, and so it's around you know less than less than ten percent. So that can be a good thing or a bad thing. It depends. Um, you know, given the fact that I'm utilizing my uh, my GPU compute and memory very well and not do much with my my CPU, that's okay for now. Like that's a pretty good. That's still a pretty good result. I mean, I'm really maximally using the GPU and the, the CPUs are just not needed as much because there's not as much to do as part of the um, as part of the training process. Most all of the heavy lifting of the training is being done on the CPU. Now, 
if you have a lot of uh, custom data loading that needs to be done, then this is a great place to make sure that your CPU utilization is quite high because typically the custom data uh, data loading is going to be primarily done on the CPU. And then once you have your kind of batch of data ready, then it will be sent over the GPU for computation. It's not always the case, um, but it can be the case. And the, for jobs like that, you will typically want to make sure that your CPU utilization is getting up quite high, that you have a, a, enough, you're keeping the CPUs busy with your custom data loading so that you don't uh, slow, the GPU is not waiting for the next round of data. And we'll talk more about that in another, another video. Um, and disk IO and network bandwidth, I don't have a whole lot to say about, about them at this point. The data set that we're working with, so far 10 is fairly small, fits entirely in memory. So there's not going to be a lot of, of disk IO or network, uh, network bandwidth going on, um, anything of, of interest really. Okay. So we can explore some of these other, um, other dashboards. So I'll go ahead and uh, close the machine resources. I'll leave the, the GPU uh, resources um, up for now. So if you go back here and take a look at our other dashboards that we have. So if you just look at uh, GPU utilization, um, so this is, is basically a bar graph. And if you have multiple GPUs on the same node, then you get multiple bars and it would look a bit more useful or interesting. Um, I don't personally use this one too much. I tend to prefer the, uh, the GPU resources dashboard. Um, there are dashboards for um, NVLink uh, data. Um, there, and currently we have a single uh, V100 job, so there's actually nothing, uh, nothing to show there. Um, there's a graph for uh, a bar graph again for PCI throughput. So this is again giving you uh, data, um, data from the GPU back to other devices, and then this at the bottom is data coming to the GPU. Um, and I don't find, again, I find the PCI throughput time series data that you get from the GPU resources dashboard to be much more informed. But you can play around with these um, and you know, create little, um, create your own little kind of sub dashboard um, if you want by, you know, dragging these, dragging these, uh, these metrics around. So if we look at the memory one, and we can put memory down here and, and you can configure this. This is using kind of Jupyter Labs um, and a user interface to kind of configure what your work area looks like. And you can do that kind of as much as you want. Okay, cool. Um, so that's pretty much all I wanted to show you uh, for this particular tutorial. Um, in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can get access to these same um, metrics dashboards but for a batch job that you've just launched uh, by submitting a job script directly to Slurm. And so outside of the JupyterLab, uh, JupyterLab server. So that'll be the topic of the next video. I look forward to uh, seeing you again soon. Bye for now.